Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Before this podcast starts, uh, I want to just thank Michael for being on the show. Very, very nice and talented person. And uh, I also want to um, just acknowledge that this is a uh, this this podcast is dedicated to the life, the memory, and the legacy of Peter uh, Lacasse. Uh, him and Michael toured together for many years, and they were. Much like in Killer Clowns from Outer Space, they were much they were really like brothers in real life, um, and uh, you'll hear in the podcast me and Michael we we reminisce on on Peter's legacy and and them starting up together and them being in Killer Clowns together and even after Killer Clowns. So uh, Peter, uh, we love you, we miss you, and this one is for you. All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show, Mindless Horror Podcast. Today's a very, another very special one to me. Um, obviously, you guys know my love for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, I, I talk about it on the channel a lot, and when it finally came to Halloween Horror Nights, I was super stoked for that. Uh, and today, we are fortunate enough to be sitting with Michael S. Siegel, one of the Terenzi brothers, Rich Terenzi to be specific, man. How are you doing, man? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right considering this uh, crazy world we're living in now. Don't have to tell um, me about it. <laughs> you know, with everything that's been happening with COVID and everything, you know, it's 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 been uh, a pretty uh, depressing year. Yeah. Well, almost a year now. Yeah. But uh, all in all, you know, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm handling it quite well. That's I've good. I've got a good support team around me with my family, uh, my kids, and. Um, yeah, for the most part. I mean, and I know, I, I don't know if you know this, but I live in the UK. Right. So um, it's what's happening here is obviously quite different than what's happening in the States. Right. As far as COVID and as far as, you know, politics and everything else. Um, but, you know, I live in a small little town uh, just outside of Leeds, which is about 200 miles north of London. Okay. It's kind of, you know, quiet, peaceful, um, very different than the whole LA scene that I used to live in. <laughs> Tell me about it, man. I'm I'm 20 minutes outside of Los Angeles, and uh, it's a very different LA. It really is. But you know, I'm just I'm fortunate enough to one have a, a job, and, and two just help. My health is going okay, and you know, just fortunate enough to be here, sitting talking with you, man. So that's good. Very yeah. good. I, I I never take anything for granted. Uh, I'm always you know, if life throws me challenges, it's just it's a sign to to hurdle over them. You know what I mean? So. Well, that's a good attitude to have. Good outlook yeah. on life. Yeah, I, I love it, man. But uh, let, let, let's get let's let's talk about uh, obviously my favorite film of all time. You can see the decorations <laughs> I have. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, man. This is a movie that uh, even to this day people still talk about, and and there's a huge huge fan base to it. Uh, tell me how you got uh signed onto the project, man, because this is obviously a, a big horror movie in the in the horror community. Yeah, well, you know, it's, I mean, it's a pretty simple story. Um, the, the thing that kind of, you know, we have, I was in a comedy team right. for quite a few years with Peter Lacasse, right. who plays uh, my brother Paul in the movie. Right. And Peter and I have been together for years. And, um, well, at the time, we'd been together probably about four or five years. And, you know, we had that brother look. Mm -hmm. So our agent put us forward for it. And we went in. And just, it was a pretty crazy audition. Right. Uh, we went in, I think we went in, in bathrobes <laughs> and eating ice cream. Nice. And we just sat down and we just acted a little bit, you know, off the wall, you know, as we usually do. Right. I mean, if you ever saw a comedy act, you kind of know what that means. Yeah. Um, and we, we just, um, you know, we, and I think they liked the initial audition and they called us back and then we did a more serious kind of breakdown of the scenes right and then they cast us and, and it was that, that simple that's simple man uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't it, you know we were we were thrilled because it was the first big project that um <laughs> we had done or we were getting to do uh right. outside of our comedy act right i mean and and this film i i think the two you you obviously the Terenzi brothers are like two of the biggest um, things that you remember from that film. Uh, they're just their their anarchy and and the the funness that they bring to that film and and just the, the comedy duo between you two. It's just it's something that I, it's always like you know the Terenzi brothers are like the one thing I think I look forward to every time watching that film is because I just oh. love how funny they are and 
just you know through a whole the the whole clown um thing that's going on and then they're kind of like doing their own thing at the same time and then it wasn't until like later in the movie they finally realized oh this is serious like let, let's take this serious and even then they're still doing comedy and i love it yeah um you know the script the way they wrote the script was was really good and they kind of gave it that whole you know b movie style when they wrote it right and i think right. we fit into that pretty well <laughs> because you know we're a bit off the wall um, I don't know if that's even the right words for it, but we're just, we're so different in the kind of comedy that we do anyway. Right. And the silliness that, that we bring across, I think it worked quite well for the style of the film. Yeah. Um, you know, we added some of our own stuff to it as well. Right. Uh, you know, the big thing is Peter, he, he had, uh, he added a line to it, which I think is one of the funniest lines in the movie uh, that wasn't originally in it. And he, he, he asked uh, Steven, the director, if he could, um, do this line right. and it's the line after they say come on guys get out of the truck when the big godzilla clownzilla was coming after him right and he goes we can't it's rented i love that <laughs> yeah, that, that was peter's line he, he he it was his idea right uh so you know we always were trying to add little things in wherever we could um to spice it up a little bit anyway yeah and i love when we first get introduced to these characters in the film i mean obviously uh everybody's out all, you know, everybody's out on the hill, just kind of with their with their um their girlfriends, every everything, and then they show up in the ice cream truck. You know, and, and, losers basically. <laughs> I I love it though. I mean, that's like, I I think if honestly something, it would probably be something me and my friends would do. We would just like when everyone's doing that, we would just show up to to just ruin the moment for everyone, just because. It, yeah, well, you know, we were we were good at ruining moments, and, <laughs> and you know, I think our our whole goal was to get women. Right. That was it. We were just basic. I think the script des described us as uh, two idiots sharing one brain. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, we we just you know that that was the whole process. Just let's get girls. Let's get an ice cream truck. You know, we sell ice cream. We get girls. Yeah. That that. I mean, I don't see how that logic works for me. Honestly, I think uh you know I, I try to sell some ice cream. Be like, hey, it's hot. You know. Summer night or, you know, summer nights, all that fun. <laughs> All we got were a couple of clown girls with big balloons. <laughs> hey, they're Debbie's sisters, you know? <laughs> we think. <laughs> we think they're Debbie's sisters. That's another line I love in this film, too, is uh, when, when, she, when uh, you know, uh, Grant's character, uh, Mike, comes up and, you know, asks you guys for help, saying they got Debbie and all that, and then they, they go, well, does she have any? Uh, she have any like roommates or sisters? And he had yeah, two two beautiful roommates, you know, and and then With they're all in food. for it. Yeah. yeah, I love it, dude. I mean, it's yeah. I, well, th those lines, those were great Kyoto lines that were written. Yeah, they, they you know, that was them. You know, they they really had a good style and an idea of what they wanted to do, and you know, they pulled it off. Um, it's really funny about the movie though, because it's it, it, at first when it was in the, it was only in the theater for about a week right. when it came out. And it didn't really have much of a following. And I think video and DVD uh, and, and obviously streaming and all of that has turned it into this, this cult classic now. Yeah. That has, has this fantastic following. More, uh, I think more with people who weren't around like you, who weren't around when it was first uh, filmed and, and when it first came out, um, which is great. And, and, and that following has really fueled things for a long time. And, and uh, you know, I've, because I've been here for 22 years, I've been kind of removed from all of that. Right. So I haven't been to any of the conventions because I understand there were conventions with, um, you know, like a, a Monster Palooza and things like right. that, or some Palooza, Horror Palooza, whatever yeah. they were. Um, and I couldn't go because I was over here. Yeah. And um, Pete and I always like to do things together. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there was something like that, we always got in touch with each other and tried to make a plan and we almost went to one of them, but then it fell through for some reason. I don't know why, but we ended up not, not doing it. But uh, Pete did go to, um, did you go to the, the 30 year I, reunion? I, I think it was a time when we just started the channel and I wanted to go so bad and I just, we never got tickets for it. Uh, and, and then when yeah, we- it was a couple, couple of years ago, three. Yeah. Yeah, it was two, just, well, two years ago. Right. I think no, two, two going on three, three right? It'll be three years ago in May, I think. Right. And, and I, was, I was gone. I was in Italy at the time doing a play. Right. And uh, so I couldn't go. So Peter went. 
Right. And he said it was a great time. It, it went very well. It, I did a little a VT for it. it. It looked a lot of fun. I mean, you know, just I, I've, I've always liked those uh, live concerts with the movie. I mean, they do that, of course, with like Star Wars and they do that with all these iconic films, yeah. Harry Potter, you know. So I, I think that concept for, a, a, you know, a live uh, orchestra band with the movie is, is, uh, is really cool. Cause it's a whole new experience of the film. Uh, and it was a big celebration. Uh, I, I saw like a lot of things on YouTube, uh, more specifically a YouTuber that I watch, uh, who I'm a big fan of every week, uh, dead meat, uh, from dead meat, James, he, he covered it big time. And that's how I really got to see like a lot of what went down. Um, right. and I, I really wanted to go so bad. And cause that was something that, uh, that when I saw, I was like, Oh man, I, this would be fun to go to. Like I, I, I would have loved to have gone to it, to be honest with you. I really would have, because it was, it was a big event. Right. Um, the thing sold out, uh, John Massari's orchestra, apparently, well, from what I could hear, it sounded fantastic. Right. And you know, the Dickies were there as well. I know the so, iconic punk band, man. I love them. Yeah. Uh, and, and to have that combination along with, you know, a good portion of the cast main cast there. And, um, you know, there was a lot of people in the audience that I heard were there that I was surprised that were in the audience. Yeah. You know, some names. And I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So I didn't realize, I think that's when I actually realized that the movie had uh, more of a following than I, I thought it had. Right. Um, and obviously so, um, that, that following in the horror community has grown and grown. I think it grows every year. Every time I, I when I talk about this film, everyone has seen it. And um, one of the things that I want to talk about, too, is the 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 film became so big that uh the first year in orlando actually at the universal studios halloween horror nights they turned it into a scare zone um yeah and and i was so jealous that i couldn't go that because i you know that was something i've been waiting to come to the event for so long and when i saw that orlando had a scare zone out of it like i was i was beyond pissed i was like i, I it better come to hollywood because I, I gotta see this yeah, it was a Hollywood Horror Nights, I think, kind of thing. Yeah, it, the did. next year they, they made it into a, an actual walkthrough uh, maze attraction, which I thought was really well put together. Probably my f yeah. If not, it was probably my favorite maze of all time that's ever been at the event, uh, hands down. Well, so you actually went to it then? Yeah, I went to the one in Hollywood, and I, I went multiple nights, and every night I went, I had to go through that maze, hands down. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, they, had, they obviously had actors who were playing us. Uh, I know um, what the one in Orlando did. Uh, which I thought was really cool. Hollywood, yeah. it was mostly just the clowns, but was it? Yeah, yeah, but they did a lot of good iconic scenes. Well, the guy who played me uh, actually got in touch with me before it opened, right? Um, in Orlando, mm -hmm. and just wanted to pick my brain a little bit about the character, right? And, and I said, "Well, there's not much brain to pick, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you know, we're, we were pretty brainless. Just do, just have fun, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But it was lovely yeah. that he he made contact and and was really. Uh, quite proud to be involved in in the whole situation. Definitely, I mean, um, it was such yeah. a fantastic production they, that that Horror Nights puts on. I mean, they put on one of the top tier Halloween events every single year. Um, yeah, and to to see them tackle this one, I was like, I mean, you can't really mess this up, man. This is an iconic film. Uh, the one in Hollywood. Uh, did they use John's obviously score, which was it's yeah. a, a freaking fantastic score. And as you're walking through, you start it from the very beginning of when you see the old man get electrocuted and end up getting uh, killed by the clowns. And right. it goes from there. It goes, you go into the spaceship, you go scene by scene, then you go into the town, and then you end up, uh, you know, in the police station, uh, Debbie's apartment. Oh, right. You know, it's just scene by, it's like right. literally this whole hour and a half film bunched down into five minutes, which works perfectly. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, yeah, it just it just there was just something about the the film that just had this this appeal, um, and and it's funny because there's so many people who are afraid of clowns anyway. Right. You know they they do have a genuine f fear of clowns. I don't know what it's called, clownophobia. I don't. Know. Yeah. So I don't know there's some phobia, probably with some stupid name that I don't know. Right. But um, I'm very much like my character. I only have half a brain, so I don't remember. Most. <laughs> um, the the. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it still has this thing, these legs that are still giving it, um, keeping it in the public eye, you know, and, and, and it helps that Netflix is, is, is airing it mm -hmm. on occasion. Uh, and of course, the DVD sales and things like that. Right. Um, you know, and they keep talking about it. And this has been <laughs> talking about it for 30 years right. about doing a sequel, which is not really a sequel. I mean, it has so many different ideas of what they were trying to do. 
but they just can't seem to get it off the ground mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And every now and again, and I think I just saw something a couple of days ago on Facebook that, that somebody found and uh, you know, one of the killer clown pages, somebody found that, uh, oh, that, that they're, they're in talks with, uh, you know, killer clowns too. And, and of course, um, one of the Kyoto brothers just says, well, you know, we've been in this situation many times. And as it happens, you know, somebody gets excited about it at the studio and then that person's gone and then they have to start all over again. Right. So it's, you know, it's a difficult business to get anything going, but they're trying really hard to get something going. Now, I don't, I think the story will be, uh, it'll be a completely new movie, not a continuation of any kind. Right. Um, from what I've heard, but I don't know for sure. They were talking about at one point doing a six part mini TV series. Okay. Um, but no one's ever contacted me about any of that. So uh, uh, I, I know that Grant is involved in some way, I right. believe. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I remember some, talking to him about that. Yeah. That was, that was one thing. But I, I really honestly don't know. And, you know, it'd be great if something happens, you know, uh, I would love to see it out there again. You know, maybe they'll put the original movie back out in the theaters again. That'd be nice. You know, it's a, a precursor to, you know, the other movie. I don't know. Who knows? Right. You know, maybe maybe they'll ask us to do a cameo. I don't know. With that being no said, idea. then, if they did call you back, you would be interested in coming back to, to shoot something? Oh, yeah. I, I think I'd do a cameo for it. Sure. That's I would awesome. do something. If they ask me to come back, cameo or a part, anything. Yeah, absolutely. Because awesome. I'm, still, I'm still, well, now I'm back as acting again, so. Right. I mean, that's good to hear, man. I would, I would love to see you. I would love to see an awesome, an awesome tribute to, uh, to Pete too, is cause you know, obviously with last year, uh, it was very, very sad yeah. news for all of us. Uh, but I would love to see a, a great, uh, a little tribute to him as well. Um, yeah, so would I, and, um, you know, Pete and I have known each other for 40 years. Right. Um, uh, with, you know, starting out, we started out putting an in improv group together back in 1982. Right. And from there, we, uh, th this funny, this, the show we, we got cast in got fell apart and we didn't want it to stop. So we kind of decided to start our own improv group. And we did that for about two and a half years. And then we broke out of the group and started our own, our own thing, our own team thing. Right. And, you know, we were very fortunate. We had some really good ideas and unique stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen our stuff before. I've seen a little um, bit of it. I've seen some of it. Yeah. Outside of Killer Clowns, I have. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those, some of those routines, you know, because we, we did a lot of our routine without talking, right. you know, Mitzi took us under her wing at the comedy store um, and was so generous to us and gave us so much time to really develop. And then once we got to that point where, you know, she felt we were ready, she, we were regulars in the main room. Uh, and this was a good portion of, you know, from like 85 to, to 92. Right. Um, we were, you know, we were down in La Jolla as regulars down there. And then she put us as regulars about 20 weeks out of a year in Vegas. And um, because we were in Vegas, this agent saw us there who could book us all over the world. And that started us taking us out of LA. Right. And we ended up traveling and performing in probably 10, 12 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. um, all over Europe, we were in Japan. Uh, we, were, we did uh, Santiago, Chile, wow. doing all these TV shows everywhere. And, you know, we had a good thing going for quite a while, but then, you know, I think it just got too much for us. We were together, you know, pretty strong for 13 years. Right. And I think we, we decided it was, it was time to, you know, call it a day right. where we felt like we wanted to be in LA and kind of pursue other things. And then my whole life upended, I ended up here in the UK um, right. because of uh, personal family things with, you know, the, a wife and who was English right. and, um, and my kid. And, uh, and so I came over here and I didn't, um, I didn't do anything for 15 years. I just, I sold food. Oh, wow. I, was a, a, I worked for a, a, a food supplier for uh, about 13 years. And, uh, and then I got divorced and, you know, started acting again. And, and I've been doing that for about, I guess I'm going on about six, seven years now where I've started acting again. And Pete and I, we kept in touch right up until, you know, the end. Right. Um, we stayed in touch. He came to my daughter's wedding back in 2011, back in LA. Uh, he came to see me. I went to LA to do, a, I was doing a corporate uh, play uh, at the um, 
big sports center down in a big convention center down near uh, uh, Staples Arena. Right. And Pete lived not far. He lived in Downey. So he came over and we spent a, a night together. Oh, no way. And you live in Downey. Not... That's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm literally like, I live in Norwalk. So I'm like down the way from Downey. Not far from there. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, but, um, you know, he, he, I, Pete sort of just, he, he let this um, depression get to him. He, you know, all these years he was spending on his own. And, you know, the times that I saw him, it was difficult for him to get out of the house. And right. he, he kind of lived like a hermit for, for a while. But, you know, we stayed in touch through emails and we would talk on the phone two, three times a year. Um, you know, he was like a brother to me. Right. And, and you know, when, when this tragedy happened, uh, you know, it was a shock. And I'm still reeling from it, to be honest with you. Yeah. And um, now I'm in the process of doing some writing, kind of telling our story. That's, that's some, you know, that's, that's so, an awesome uh, tribute right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was, <laughs> Pete was, he was wonderfully talented and he was, he was very funny and uh, I learned a lot from him. He learned a lot from me and right. we just worked really well together and, and we had a great thing going. Yeah. And, and you know, our I, friendship was probably the most important part of that. You know, we had our ups and downs. It was like a marriage, anything else, right. but, you know, but uh, yeah. I love the guy, and, and uh, you know I miss him terribly. Yeah, God rest his soul, and I I know he's in a better place, uh, no more suffering or any of that. So, you know, he 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 honestly, uh, between you two, you guys brought something to this film um, that really I think brings a bright star to to the film in general. You know what I mean? And and I think that anyone who watches this film knows that anyone who watches this film will remember the Terenzi brothers. Uh, for time to go until this until the end of the time to you know this movie will live on and yeah we're we're stuck on celluloid for the rest of eternity <laughs> everyone's gonna know you guys as the as the ice cream guys you know what i mean like i i, I love yeah. it though but and and you guys you guys honestly you guys th this shows you how much we still love the film obviously when i when i reached out to you to talk to you about the film obviously uh you were really with open arms with it and that was really cool and um like I said, as a kid growing up watching this film, this is to, to this day, this right now is still unbelievable. I never thought I'd be able to sit and talk with everybody um, that I've talked to thus far. And uh, you're living the dream, aren't you? I, I'm just I'm just super happy. I really am. I, 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 I that's good. I, 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 I love doing this kind of stuff. I, I love bringing entertainment to people. And I, I really love what I do. I, I do. And that's good. Trying to just spawn that's a, a whole hopefully get a whole next generation of, of horror fans out there to really uh, watch these films and, and like, you know, horror and, and just bring them into the horror community. Cause I think uh, the horror community rules. I love it. I love it so much. And, and it's, and it's the opportunities like this that I get to interview people like you and. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I mean, I'm glad it's nice to be able to do what you enjoy and I enjoy what I do as well. It's, right. it's a great feeling to have being be able to do something that you, you can, um, uh, you know, really benefit from a really happy place from it all yeah. and really enjoy those moments and, and, you know, never feel like you're working. Yeah. It's a, it's a hobby for me it really is. That's good. It honestly Let me is. ask you something. I'm, I'm looking in the background at the clown and you've got some other yeah. two little clowns back there. What, what are the two clown puppets in the, in the boxes there? Are those collector items? Yeah, these are uh, a pop Funkos. So uh, the, 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 the uh, Funko team, they're, huge brand right now i mean i'm a big funko collector yeah. as you can tell but um so I'll, I'll give you a little i'll show you a little up close and yeah let's do a plug for funko yeah yeah funko if you're watching this you know i'm a huge collector so <laughs> there you go Get, pick up the advertising there, there let's you go. go uh this was the first one that came out this is slim uh with his little ray gun uh, this was actually right. a convention exclusive, I think, for San Diego Comic Con, and you can only right. purchase this at GameStop, from what I remember. It's kind of in a case because this was this really? one. Be honest, this one's actually worth like eighty bucks. Is it really? Yeah, these uh wow. these little pops go up and thing, but this is slim. Uh, this was the first Killer Clowns one that came out. And I'm hoping eventually they'll make them not only of the clowns but of you guys too. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. Uh, here's that'd Jumbo. Cool. He's the uh, the one from the scene, of course, where he's about to kill the little girl, and then you know the girl comes yeah. back. Uh, this was this was a released with a 
these other two as well, uh, and I'm hoping they keep, like I said, keep releasing more because I I will buy them. But these wow, little, I've never seen those before. That's pretty cool. Yeah, these are pretty. Uh, this one, the slim one, will be a little bit harder to come by um, because I think they only made so much. These are limited edition. But these yeah. ones right here, the next, uh, this one and the next two I'm about to show you, these ones will be a little bit easier to come by um, because right. a lot of they made a lot of these. Uh, I would imagine you can buy them online. Huh? Yeah, there's a website that I bought them off called uh, Entertainment Earth, and they uh, they right. pretty much like a collector's website and stuff. So. Uh, here's Spikey, of course, with the balloon dog. That's a iconic yeah, one right cool. there. I really like wow. this one a lot. This one's a really cool one. Uh, one of yeah. my favorites. And then did the they only do one... the four. What's up? Did they only do the four? Yeah, they only have the four out right now. And then, of course, you got Shorty with his boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah. great little character. Great little character. Yeah. Um, and then the... um, you know, it, it's really funny because um, there's for years there's been talk about these little buttons, right? That Pete and I wore on our costumes. Okay. These ice cream buttons. Right. You know about these. You heard about yes, these. Yes, I have. Do you know no one knows where they are? And apparently or somebody might have them and they're supposed to be worth a lot of money. Wow. Supposed to be. Yeah. I, I don't know who has them or where they are. Um, I, I wish I had taken them off and kept them, you know. <laughs> honestly, I wish I had and kept them as a, a souvenir, but I didn't keep anything from the movie. They should have. They should have <coughs> gifted you guys the uh, the ice cream truck right there. <laughs> With a little miniature one that they blew up. Yeah, it would have been cool. Yeah, um, um, yeah it would have been nice if they had. Um, sorry, let me just take a drink of water here. Would have been nice to have some kind of a uh, something, but. Yeah, I, I I've been trying to collect little by little. Um, this mask right here, obviously a fatso. Uh, one of my favorites. Um, I bought at Midsummer Scream, which is a a horror convention out here, uh, and yeah. I bought that there, and I just uh, fell in love with it. And then come to find out, the same day that I bought it, someone actually came dressed up as one of the clowns, like full costume. He had a, a cotton candy cocoon with a, one of the bendy straws coming out of it. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, people do. I've seen online people making a lot of things for killer clowns. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's amazing that people are are so uh, fascinated with it. Definitely. And that you know they take the time to really put an effort into you know um, championing it, champion, championing it. Right. Champion. Again, half a brain. <laughs> um, yeah, something like that, you know, to, to, to keep it out there and keep it going and guys like you who do that as well. Right. So, you know, you know, we're, we're very well, uh, I think if they did do another killer cons movie, it would do very well in the theaters this time. I, I remember for the longest too, I had heard that, uh, that they were going to put it on, uh, that sci-fi was going to, was going to do it. Cause they were doing a whole resurgence of like horror movies. I think they did another leprechaun film. Obviously they're famous for them. Sharknado films. Um, so I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> I, I watched one for about a half an hour. <laughs> I, I, you know what? My dad, my dad loves anything sharks, giant monsters. So he'll watch those movies. And I walk in the room and I, I, I see him watching. I'm like, "What are you doing? Why are you watching these films? Like, what interest do you have in them so much?" Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's weird. And then you see, what well, I think ones was are they all with Steve Gutenberg or just the one? I think that all of them are. He's in all of them. And they're, they're, everything about them is just, they're so corny anyway. And just the premise is so stupid. But how can they get movie after movie after movie after movie? Made? I guess it's just and a game every, of cult following. We can't get a second Killer Clowns made. I know. I don't, yeah. Who do I, I, I MGM, listen, <laughs> the fans been asking you for 30 years, like, we need a sequel to this film. Yeah, it'd be nice. I wish I, I, I don't really have much input put into that. Right. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's up to those guys. And I, I wish I, I could help them, you know, you know, see the future and see the goal and help them achieve that goal of getting another one made. Right. Even if I had nothing to do with it. Um, right. You know, the Kyoto brothers just absolutely loved working with them. And I, you know, I stay in touch once, once a year, maybe with them. Right. Um, and uh, they're such great guys. And they were so, it was so easy to work with them on the set as well. It was, it was such a relaxed set. Yeah, it, it seems like every like chemistry with everybody, just everyone. It looks like everyone. I mean, from behind the scenes things that I've seen, it looks like everyone got along. Everyone had fun making the film. I mean, 
It looked yeah, like- we did. I, I saw some behind the scenes stuff that I hadn't seen before. Right. You know, the, the end of the movie, the, the final scene where the car comes, the car comes, car comes through, that wasn't the original ending. Wow. Okay. I did this. The I did original not ending was, was me and me, the two Terenzi brothers running. And I remember the, the, in the script, it said screaming like banshees. And I remember <laughs> us doing that. And that was supposed to be the end of the movie. And, um, about six months later, they decided we need a better ending. Okay. So they put that in with us coming back with the con and them getting hit in the face with the pies. The pies. Yeah. yeah. I, I've always wondered about that ending too, because like uh, the the last time we saw someone get hit with a pie in that film, they turned into to acid mush. So isn't that funny you mentioned that? Because I always thought that as well. That wait a minute, wouldn't Mike, Debbie, and and uh, Dave all Melt. Dead, yeah. Like I, I, I don't know. I, 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 the way I think of it was it just kind of a a, a last ending gag because the ship did blow yep. up too. Was that just like the left leftovers of what fell out of the ship? You know, I, I, I'm curious. So, yeah, I mean, um, believe it or not, I think it actually still works because of that. Right. Because it, it's sort of, you know, that whole B movie thing and and maybe mocking themselves a bit. Right. Because everything in the movie you know, doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's all fantasy really. Yeah. yeah. So why not, you know, have a little, uh, take a little extra, you know, Go fantasy extra step, it, you know? Stretch it out and, 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 and have some fun with it as well. Yeah. Um, it was, but it was cold that night. We did film that in LA. Okay. And I just remember having all that gunk all over me. <laughs> Um, and it was, you know, middle of the night and it, and it was quite cold for LA. Right. And I just, I remember I was freezing the whole time. On top of that, you have I to eat a, you have to eat a popsicle stick in that scene too. So it's like, yeah, we, yeah. well, we didn't really eat it. We yeah. sat in there. I, think, I think maybe one of us took a bite. I don't remember. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't watched the whole film in a long time. So, um, cause you know, I, I really don't like to watch myself. <laughs> you're, you're so Really good in it though. You're talented. I love it. Well, I appreciate that, but it, you know, I what I see, I see, I see different things than you guys see right. when you're watching. So you know, I'm 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 think I'm a lot more judgmental than most people would be when right. they watch it because of it's me. I'm watching myself and I'm judging everything that I do. Yeah, but that's just. I think why there's a lot of actors who don't like to watch. Themselves. Yeah, I've heard that. Like Leo DiCaprio doesn't like watching his own films. Like Brad Pitt, same way. A lot of people. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. There's quite a few that don't like to watch them because then you just see all the things that you could have done better. Right. Or different choices you could have made that you would have liked better. Or, um, you know, there's probably a certain take that you did that you go, oh, that's the take they're going to use and they don't use it. You right. know, <laughs> it's all those kind of things. You know, there's typical actor stuff. Yeah. But um, I've, over the years, especially since I've been here and I've been, you know, the acting I've been doing here, I don't worry about that as much anymore. Right. So uh, for a lot of people who don't know, what, what, what have you, uh, I mean, obviously pre-pandemic, what, what have you been doing? You did a lot, you've been doing a lot of onstage productions? Well, what happened was I sort of had, I was doing my job selling food. Right. Um, that was my full-time day job. And fortunately, I had a lot of freedom because I was running the north of England. And so the office was down south. So I had freedom to go into accounts and make my own appointments and do my own thing and run my own kind of area. Right. So that, uh, when I decided to go back to acting, that opened the door for me to, uh, to, you know, to start going to auditions and things without them really knowing that out without I was doing that. Right. I shouldn't probably be saying it here in case anyone from the company I work for is listening, <laughs> which I doubt they are. But, um, I started when I when I started. I I didn't know if I wanted to get back into it, so I did some amateur theater, right. some amateur musicals, because I that, that that was my start. Before Peter and I got into comedy, uh, before I moved out to L.A., I, I worked in in theater in in Maryland for uh, quite a long time. Right. And you know, I studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And, okay. You know, and the, it was theater based. Right. So. Um, yeah, I did musicals and I did a little bit of theater. I did a play called The Interview and that sort of catapulted me to a point where I thought maybe I should get an agent and sort of slowly worked my way back into it. Right. So I um, I got myself an agent 
things were dead for about a year and a half. Then I got myself a better agent and then things started kind of taking off, especially when I grew the beard. Right. Um, you know, I started getting a lot of parts as, as, uh, doing, you know, little TV things. I did quite a few commercials. Okay. Um, doing, um, uh, a couple little TV bits here and there, right. you know, uh, and mostly I was getting cast as either the Jewish grandfather or the rabbi or in play. And I was doing some, some plays. Well, what happened was I, I, I was doing some things. I did a Xerox commercial. Um, and then I, um, I really wanted to, you know, I was getting to a point where I was doing all right and I was having to turn down theater stuff right. because I was afraid I wouldn't have a job when I came back and I wanted, needed that job. So I just decided I was going to make a, a leap of faith and I sold my house right. and uh, decided I'll live off that money if the theater, if, if performing isn't going. And that was about three years ago. And so I started doing more theater and that's when I got into theater. And then I was on a pretty good role. I'd done like uh, three or four theater pieces. Right. Um, and then I was ready to do my fifth and COVID happened. Right. And then, yeah. uh, so that kind of killed everything and theater has been dead since. So I haven't done, uh, you know, I like to do musicals. So I was right. doing musicals and then, and then, um, I was in lockdown. I have bad lungs. I have COPD. So my, right. my lungs aren't great. So I'm at risk. So when we're, when we're in lockdown here, I ended up being, um, uh, having the shield, okay, which is one step above uh, lockdown, right. meaning I can't go out, I can't do anything, I can't do grocery shopping, I'm not allowed to do anything. Right. I have to have someone bring my groceries to me and I'm supposed to stay in completely. Um, so the minute that lockdown ended, all of a sudden all this work started to come. So I did like uh, five jobs in a, like a three month period before this next lockdown was just started. Right. So I did one, two, three, four commercials, and I did this TV show for the German market. Okay. And the commercials, I mean, there's a, right now, if people want to see me on TV or would remember me, I did um, an Amazon commercial about a year and a half, two years ago. Okay. Uh, where the father is teaching the daughter how to cook spaghetti because she burnt the duck. <laughs> okay. And it, it had, it was on for quite a, about a year in the States and it was on during the world series and stuff. So people right. would have seen that. And then um, right now there's a, well, I don't know if it's on now, but during over Christmas period and everything, there was a KFC commercial okay. that was on and you literally see me for one second. <laughs> that's it. So that, I mean, that's commercials for you. Yeah. But um, again, I'm in lockdown again, so I can't do anything. Right. And I'm shielding again. So I'm not allowed to do any work of any kind, even though there are productions that are happening at the moment, but there's right. no theater or anything like that. So I'm just waiting it out. And I've been spending a lot of my time writing. Oh, awesome. man! A lot, of, a lot of writing. And I've been doing a lot of writing for the last couple of years, actually. Right. So I haven't gotten anything out there, really. I'm still, you know, I'm one of these guys that, you know, I, I read it and I, I get a couple people to read it and then I fix it and then I keep fixing it and I keep fixing it. Right. I just haven't put it out there yet, but I think I'm going to get to a point where I will. I know enough people in the industry now who I think I can trust and who would, would give me some, you know, some, some good creative feedback as to what I do to make the pieces better. Right. Uh, Cause I'm, I'm pretty much a novice at writing. I, you know, Pete and I, believe it or not though, Pete and I wrote uh, a script back in the nineties. Okay we wrote a script together called decoy men. Oh, wow. Okay. And, um, it was, we were, we were performing for a year in Atlantic city right. at Irv Griffin's resorts. And this guy came in and he'd seen the show and he came backstage and said, you know, I really like you guys. Uh, and he says, I write screenplays. And, uh, I think there's a screenplay I have that you guys would be great for. And we said, can we read it? And we said, and he said, yeah, sure. So we read it and we thought, you know what, we need to add, make it more our own right. and add more of us into it. And so we spent the summer with this guy who happened to be an Atlantic city uh, detective. Oh, wow. Police detective. And so the three of us wrote it together um, and we actually got it optioned. And Pete and I were going on the road a lot and we had it optioned and, 
we came back, we were in Germany for like six months and we came back and we came back, we had a meeting with the guy who optioned it. Right. And he said, Hey, I love the rewrites. And we went, what rewrites? <laughs> and our manager was sitting there uh, and he goes, Oh yeah. I forgot to tell you, uh, we had your, you know, your third writer partner do a rewrite for it. And we go, you did. And he said, yeah. Um, and so the guy said, I love the rewrites. And we went, well, we haven't read it. So we're going to cancel this meeting right now. And we're going to go read it. And we read it and we hated it. Oh, wow. And we pulled out. All right. So, you know, as far as background, you know, background in writing, there, there is something there. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, I think I could get something optioned again, but uh, we'll see what happens. I think this story that I'm going to tell about me and Pete and our, our journey. Right. Um, I think, I think it's a good story and I think it, it'll, it has more to it. You know, it has comedy and tragedy in it because it'll have part of, you know, our act in it um, of the things that we did. It'll have our relationship and it'll have, you know, the, the difficulties that Peter went through yeah. and the difficulties that I went through as well. So yeah. it'll, it'll have a little bit of everything. Well, you know what? I, I, I could tell you this right now. If if it ever comes out, I'll watch it or I'll, I'll read it. And and however you put it out there in the world, uh, I'll support it. And uh, it's much – you know what? And I'm going to compare you guys to uh, another documentary, and it's based off actually a band, uh, the Beastie Boys. They uh, they, uh, they they did a documentary earlier, like during the pandemic, uh, talking about their lives – and um, after after it's on that, Netflix. is it on Netflix right now? I don't know. So I don't know how it works with overseas, but I know the last time it was on Apple TV Plus. So oh, well, I have I have that. Yeah, uh, it's it's yeah. it's literally a, it's a very good documentary. I think it's about two two and a half hours long, and it just tells the story of their life and how they grew up and and the mistakes right. they made and just growing up as a, as a band. And and they talk about after one passed away, they just kind of hung it up and and you know called quits and and everything about right. it, but. You know that I mean it, it, it's really relatable to as what you were telling me as as to you got you two did everything together and yeah just hearing your guys' relationship it, it's it's really it's cool to see behind the curtain that you don't get to see in the public eye very much which I think is really cool yeah I mean you know people we weren't you know famous by any means we didn't have you know you know the kind of following that say the Beastie Boys had or right. anyone below them or even below them. Um, you know, we were just a couple of guys out there. We got lucky and, and, and we were fortunate enough to have a good comedy act that uh, kept us going for a while, you right. know, and we, we were able to do some, some um, high profile things during over, over the time. Um, but because we went away for so long, we were overseas that sort of killed any kind of, uh, it killed I don't know how to say this exactly. Well, it killed us uh, trying to um, build our, our status right. in, in the U.S. and in L.A. Mm -hmm. It sort of just, it, 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 we took a nosedive because we were gone for so long. But, you know, we were getting a lot of work. We were doing a lot of TV shows. And, you know, we were busy. Mm -hmm. And because it took us overseas, it was worth it. And we had done pretty much all the TV shows we could do in the States, you know. Um, so... It, it, it was, um, for us, we always kind of felt like we were kind of, you know, kind of middle of the road. We weren't these guys that were going to ever be, you know, hit the big time, so to speak, or anything like that. It just right. never manifested in a way. And I don't think we ever really, I don't know if we ever really thought about or cared about that. We never, I don't think we talked about that. I think our whole focus was just about working just keep working just keep doing what you love to do and work and get a paycheck and and enjoy yourself right and i think that's what we were about when we were we were together and you know the film and, and television stuff that we did together you know we did we were on a soap opera for a while we were, had recurring roles on santa barbara okay as the two brothers in that as well <laughs> i love the brother duo man i love it yeah well we looked like brothers yeah. didn't we yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, so, you know, doing those kind of things, those were always the things that kept us going. And, and, you know, uh, we started building a reputation in LA and I think it was in some ways, maybe a mistake to leave LA, uh, you know, to, to start traveling. Cause we were gone for six months, sometimes a year we had two years. We did, we did a circus in Germany for a year. Oh, nice. 
strangely enough, it was clowns. <laughs> um, it had nothing to do with killer clowns, but right. we, did, we performed in a circus in Germany for a year. And we did Merv Griffin's resorts in, in Atlantic City for a year. Okay. And then there were two six month or three six month periods where we were back in Germany doing, doing another theater, just doing our act. Um, and those kind of times being away for that long, it just, it was, it was difficult. Yeah, it made it difficult for us as well as a partnership because we were just two in each other's back pockets all the time. You, you know, it, it's you know throughout this entire show, I, I've enjoyed honestly really listening to because uh, I didn't realize you know how close you were with with Pete. You know, uh, as far as yeah. you know, hearing more about it, and it's just I, I I've, I've liked seeing the other side of outside of Killer Clowns just. The relationship you two had. I mean, it's. I think I'm gonna go out and say this. This podcast is is dedicated to his life right here. I'm gonna dedicate this podcast to him and to honor his memory and everything. This is. I mean, you guys just just hearing the stories and and talking about it. Obviously, you guys are really close. And um, it, when, like I said, the day that I heard the news, it, it was just really a tragedy for I think the whole community and and I can only imagine how you went through it. But I. I I, I, I really love what I've been hearing today. You know, it's been a, a great, I think this was a good podcast to really honor his, his, his legacy and, and his, um, and who he was as a person. Cause I agree. I mean, and I wish, I wish he could have been here and shared this podcast too. He, I think he would have loved it. Right. Um, yeah. but all in all, you know, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. No, um, anytime, man. I, I, I'm just, like I said, I'm happy to get the opportunities that I had, and you know, if 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 it was if he was around today, I like you said, I think he'd be on here, and I think we'd all be having a lot of laughs and everything. But the way I like to now, you know, remember him is now he's in a better place, he's resting in peace, and he doesn't have to deal with what's going on in the world right now, honestly. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. It uh, is, man. But thank you for that. yeah, sure. man. I mean, you know. <clears throat> It, it it's like I said, it, it's just been an honor to do all of this and, and just to get the opportunities that I've had. Um, I'm, I'm forever grateful for all of this. Uh, I, I've never said no to an opportunity and whether it, it's the best mo choice of my life or the worst, you know, I mean, you learn from everything and you go forward and, um, you know, I, I I've been, I've enjoyed talking to you, man. And for this, this last hour, it's, it's just, just hearing the, all these stories, man. Like, like I said, I've never heard. Well, I got loads of stories. I mean, I have, I haven't even got into the, the crazy stories that and things that we've experienced together. What honestly, what is, uh, the, f let, let, let's, let, let's, let's, you know, let's get it. What is the funny? Right, I'll, I'll tell you one story that has a good, good ending to it. Um, <clears throat> we were doing this, this circus in Germany for a year, and, right. you know, in, in these European circus, there's, you know, performers from all over Europe in different places. So there was right. this guy named Shmarlovsky, <laughs> um, who was this Russian uh, guy who did all these things with animals, all these funny things. That, with animals. That honestly sounds like something you'd hear from like a Disney movie or something. <laughs> I know, it sounds crazy, but he, was this, he, had, he wore this hat and he had this kind of droopy face, Shmarlovsky, and he didn't speak a word of English. <laughs> not, not a word. Um, and the... I was getting married. I, I met, I actually met my wife right. at the circus. And during the run of the circus, we got pregnant and we got married. <laughs> okay. So she, uh, I would, the guys were going to throw me a bachelor party. Nice. And so we were inviting different people and it was me and Pete and this guy named John Campanello. Campanello. And he was lion tamer. Oh, nice. And John was American as well. And the three of us were going around asking people and stuff. So we went up to Shmarlovsky, who didn't speak a word of English. And we said, hey, Shmarlovsky, you, you, look, Mike's getting married. Would you, would you like to go and join us for, uh, you know, some drink and some food and, you know, just have a really good time to celebrate, you know, have a little bachelor party for him and stuff. And Shmarlovsky looks at us and goes, mm -hmm. and then, you know, he said, look, you know, we, we're, we're taking Mike out, you know, we're going to have some food, we're going to eat, we're going to do some stuff, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to have some fun. Would, would you like to join us? And Shmarlowski goes, <laughs> and finally, John just goes, hey, look, we're going to take Michael out and we're all going to take turns fucking him in the ass. You want to come? <laughs> and Shmarlowski goes, tonight? <laughs> 
that's a joke. <laughs> but it really happened like that. He just went, good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Like that's what he, he heard. He heard the, the, the but anyway, there you go. That's it. Oh man. That, I mean, it doesn't get any funnier than that right there, right? That, that's, I mean, the guy who doesn't speak English and then that you say that, you, you know, you're trying to explain to him what you're going to do. And then you tell him that and he's like, tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great, man. Um, my and God. I don't even think I told it that well, but there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, um, we've uh, we've had a lot of we did a lot of crazy things over the years, and I have more stories, but I'm going to save some of those for you know the the thing I'm putting together about us. So. Definitely, man. I mean, and and look out I, for this a little tidbit that I am I have actually I've written that in already. Right. Um, I, so. and, and, you know, really look out for this, uh, when it does, when it does eventually get released, man, it does, yeah. it, it's going to, I think it's going to be an amazing tribute to, to Pete, uh, much like how this podcast was today. Uh, but it's just going to further their story and, um, you've only heard very tiny bit of it. And I think this one will, will give you a more in-depth look and I, and I'm looking forward to this, honestly, I'm, I'm glad that you, um, are doing something like this. Uh, and it's going to be really cool. To, to see this I, I really i really think it's going to be a, an amazing amazing time to, to watch i can't wait yeah it'll be great if, if it happens and you know we can make it work you know what it's like in this industry it's right. difficult you know, killer clown's been taking 30 years to you know and it's still not happened and, we'll go you know, as far as this man I won't be around, so let's um if we can't even get it by a major studio man let's start like a gofundme or something to get this let's let's i i think it needs to be done it has to be out there, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot more involved than that. I think, I don't, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it also has to be, if, the amount of money that it would take to make a movie like that these days. Right. I mean, back 30 years ago, you could get away with, you know, making a movie like that for a, a budget that would, was reasonable. Right. You know, when I say reasonable, I'm talking about under 10 million. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, nowadays the, you can't make a movie for less unless you make yeah. some little thing in your house on a little tiny camera. Yeah, man. I, I, I hope so, man. I hope it gets it gets picked up and, and everything because I think you, your guys' story is something that needs to be told and heard. A uh, lot of lot of memories. Thanks. Well, look, if you want to if you want to see a couple of our, our well, our two signature pieces that we did, I have a YouTube page. I don't know if you've been on it yet. Right. And it's just, it's Michael S. Siegel. Okay. Yeah. And I'll link that below for anyone who wants to see it. Our, our routines are on there. Um, you know, just uh, have a look. Yeah. You know, you can see what Lacasse and Siegel were all about. Yeah. Uh, the kind of things that we did. And there, I think there's three different things on there too. Uh, one of them we did, for the very first TV show we ever did. Okay. Is actually on there. It was before, it was right when we started doing this one particular piece and then you'll see that piece again in its full right you know after years of working on it and see where it went to but um you know i put those on there obviously as a tribute to, to peter yeah. as well and i'll be adding more things i have to, i have stuff on dvd that i have to get a guy to put it on mp4 thing so i can now then put it you on know YouTube. on youtube because of lockdown, I really haven't had a chance to get together with the guy to do it. Right. Uh, eventually, I will do it and put more things on there about Peter and I. I just I went through a lot of DVDs and stuff and had a look at a bunch of stuff uh, that we did together. Um, you know, that was uh, from different comedy clubs that we worked at and things like that. Right. And just from just uh, us being out, like we have, I have a whole DVD of us in Japan, which is most of it's pretty boring, but there are hey, a couple man. of moments. It's the yeah. legacy that matters. That's all it is. Yeah. Well, for me, it's a it's a nice memory. Yeah, yeah. It's a good memory. I mean, you were well, there for it. The last job we did together as well. Right. It was the very last job that we actually performed together. Right, so. man. I, I'm excited, man. I can't wait to see it. And I'll link that in the description below. So everyone who wants to check that out, definitely uh, show some love and support. And go check out the early stuff, man. Before Killer Clowns, what they were doing, man. It's a lot well, of fun. Before and after. It was before and around. after. There you go. We, yeah. we, we were, that was actually in the middle. Killer Clown was in the middle of what All was that. happening. Yeah. Um, Mike, I want to thank you so much today for, for coming on the show, man, and, and talking with us and, and taking time out of your day to do this, man. Uh, before I let you go, man, obviously this is a horror podcast, and I got to ask you probably the most hardest question that I always get uh, my guest reaction for, which is what is, I mean, it, what is your favorite horror movie? <laughs> uh, you're going to hate me for this answer. 
I do not like horror films. That is a shock right there. Yeah. I am not a fan. I do not watch horror films. Right. So because of, of that, um, and I've seen so few, uh, for me, I, I like a film that doesn't have a lot of blood and gore in it and stuff like right. that. Um, so I like, they don't call those horror films so much, do they? No, there's some, there's some that yeah. are kind of not really on the gory side and, and all that blood stuff. So, yeah. So for, for me, you know, horror films, so I'm going to say my favorite horror film and it's, you know, you know, you're going to, you're just going to go, Oh yeah, of course. Killer clowns from outer space. I, I'm, I'm completely on board with that one. Honestly, that is, I mean, it's the only one I think I can actually watch from beginning to end. Um, <laughs> Cause I just, I, I don't know. There's something I never would go to and watch one. And I, when I was younger, I think I watched some, but there was, there was none that really did it for me. I think, you know, I think Hitchcock's The Birds for That's me. That's a good one. Yeah, it was probably one that I remember. Or now this is, this wasn't really a horror film, but it was one of those films that scared the hell out of me. And it was called The Bad Seed. Oh, okay. Um, it's about a little girl who's not nice. <laughs> and it was, it's a, it's a black and white. It's from, from the, I think it came out in the fifties or sixties. Right. And I just remember watching it uh, on a black and white screen as a kid and being, it scared the hell out of me. Yeah, man. Those, I mean, yeah. going back to the, like the, the beginning and the origins of horror, obviously it was the same thing when like the universal monsters came out, scared the crap out of audiences then, you know, and now we watch those films and we just look at them as iconic because that's what started a whole new genre of, of film. So Absolutely. I mean, yeah, no, I'm. I love. I love old school horror, man. I, I really do. The, the of how cheesy it is, and and just those. It, it's it's really hard to. I think there was after a certain decade, it was just hard to to see. Like, it, you can't make the same films you can like you did back in the day, man. Those films are just part of a legacy now. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's so many out there that are like that, you know, and and I'll be honest with you, you know, on those Halloween nights when. You, we're in a group of people and you're going to watch things. So I've watched a bunch of the Friday the 13th, right. You know, Halloween's, you know, um, you know, scream, those kind of things. Right. Um, but it's, it's really weird. I just, they're just not the kind of film. Uh, they're not go-to films for me, you know, right. horror films have never been. So I apologize to all you horror films yeah. out, fans <laughs> out there. Um, it's just, it's never been, you know, my go-to kind of thing. Right. No, you'd be surprised how many people I've actually heard because I interview a lot of like uh, like all the people who work at like Not Scary Farm. You're, you know, when they do those events, all the monsters who work there. When I interview right. them, you'd be surprised how many people say, you know what? I'm not a fan of horror and I work these events. And I'm like, hey, man, sometimes people just like scaring people, but they don't like to watch the films and stuff. You know, it's completely it's not a genre yeah. for everyone. I mean, I'm, I'm a guy who watches everything. So I I respect it, man. And I'm glad to hear uh, you, you mentioned a lot of classics. So, I mean. That's all that matters to yep. me, man. The classics are the best. Um, Absolutely. Mike, thank you so much for, for like I said, taking the time out of your day and being on the show and, and honestly just giving us uh, a little tribute and honoring the memory of Pete today. I mean, that was uh, – it was a great podcast, and I, and I hope everyone has enjoyed it, and I hope everyone uh, continues to honor the legacy of Pete, man. Well, thank you very much. I had a great time. Thanks for letting me come on. Yeah, you're, you're welcome and, back. Uh, Anytime, man. All the Clown fans, thanks for supporting us constantly. Oh, Yay. yeah. Every year, man, I'm telling you, that movie gets more of a following. It, it seems like it, it does. It does. I love it. Um, so, everyone for watching, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, we have social media, uh, Twitter, at Knights of Horror, uh, Instagram, at the Knights of Horror. And, of course, if you guys are uh, brand new to our channel, uh, hit that subscribe button with the bell notification be where every time we put up a new video leave some comments down tell Michael how you felt man because Michael very good guy very friendly person uh, when I asked him to come on he was very open arms and I uh, couldn't he he made a fanboy uh, fanboy even I have no life I'm <laughs> sitting here you know COVID lockdown there's nothing else to do man yeah <laughs> It was fun, man. I, I, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. It was really nice to have, be able to do something, you yeah. know, that's connected uh, to something I enjoy. So yeah, I, I'm glad you came on, man. And like I said, you get you're welcome back on the channel here every, anytime. Nights of Horse supports you, man. We love you. Well, thanks very much. 
Anyway, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Stay safe, wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> we